Hey, what's up? This is the NLA Ninja with Rampant Design Tools. In this edition of Running Rampant, I'll show you how to use Studio Light Overlays. Studio Light Overlays are a collection of 521 real optical light stock elements that you can drag and drop on any video to enhance the quality. Separated into categories of gradient, hard light, and soft light overlays, they are available in 2K, 4K, and 5K via immediate download or a USB 3.0 drive. These clips are great enhancement elements on any video project you may have, whether it be a wedding, short film, or more. As with the other products, they work in all popular editing and compositing softwares such as Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Motion, Avid Media Composer, and more. Today, I'll show you two examples of how Studio Light overlays can be used for your videos. For these examples, I'll be using Adobe's After Effects and Apple's Final Cut Pro 10. For my first example, I'll show you how to make your overlays pop more with your footage by using blend modes and blurs in Final Cut Pro 10. For my second example, I'll show you how to create a magnified kid stays in picture effect in Adobe's After Effects. Without further ado, let's run rampant. This effect can be achieved in any NLE or compositing software, but I want to show this in Final Cut Pro 10 so that we can showcase how easily rampant products work no matter your software preference. What I did here was I duplicated my footage from the primary storyline onto the secondary storyline. On my footage on the secondary storyline, I changed the blend mode to overlay and added a Gaussian blur filter. Playing with the blur parameters, I determined how much of a glowy appearance I wanted my clip to have. From there, I added some hard light overlays on the storyline above. I changed their blend modes to add and their spatial conform to none so I can enjoy the 4K goodness. Once that was done, I got the result that you saw earlier. This is an effect that can be taken further as I like to play with the contrast and look of my footage. Try it out yourself and see what you could create. You could even go even further by adding some distortion, filters, or what have you. Let's see how we can combine light overlays with a kid stays in picture effect. This is a popular technique used in documentaries and TV shows when you don't have access to B-roll. You take a picture, you cut it up and isolate the segments, and then you animate it in 3D space. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that while also adding a magnifying effect. I have an image of a snowboarder in mid-air with mountains in the sky in the background. I've extracted each segment from this image to isolate what I wanted to animate. First, let's select all the layers and make them 3D by enabling the 3D switch. Next. Let's add a camera to our composition. So I'm going to right click, go to New, Camera. You can choose whichever preset you want. I'm going to choose a 28 millimeter preset. With the camera added, let's right click on it and create an orbit null. Now we can control our camera in a much easier way. Before we start animating, let's push our cutouts in 3D space. I'm going to select the sky, 
hit the P key to bring up its position. I'm going to push it back really far and then scale it back to its original dimensions. Next, I'll push back the mountains a bit and scale it back to its original dimensions as well. Finally, I'm going to push the snowboarder forward and then scale him back to his original size. If you want to see how everything looks, go to your active camera dropdown and go to custom view. You'll see that our sky is pushed back pretty far, as well as our mountains, but our snowboarder is pushed forward. And right here is the camera showing us how everything looks so far. Let's go back to active camera. Now, let's add some keyframes to our null object. I'm going to select our null object, press the P key, I'm going to press Alt-P to add a keyframe at its current value. Let's move the playhead 12 seconds forward and modify the position values. If you scroll your playhead from the beginning keyframe to the last keyframe, the depth between the cutouts are more visible than before. Feel free to change the last keyframe to a higher push forward value if you have to. Once you've taken care of that, you can now animate the snowboarder to your desire. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the composition. With the snowboarder selected, let's hit Alt-P to add a position keyframe. I'm going to move my playhead to the 16 second mark and create another keyframe. I'll move the snowboarder slightly diagonal right to give him the illusion that he's falling down towards the ground. Before we proceed further, let's highlight all of our keyframes we created so far. Let's right click, go to Keyframe Assistant, and change these to Easy Ease. Now that we've taken care of that, let's magnify our animation. I'm going to go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. I'm going to go to the Rectangular Mask tool and create a mask. Once you've got the mask created the way you want, go to your effects browser and type in Transform. Double click to apply to the adjustment layer and change the scale to 120. With the adjustment layer selected, press the M key twice to bring up the mask parameters. Set a keyframe for mask path. Let's double click our mask and move it off screen towards the left. Next, move to the four second mark and move the mask off screen towards the right. If you move your playhead from the beginning of the comp to the second keyframe that we set for the mask, you should see that our image looks magnified. I'm going to space out the two keyframes for the mask path a little more so it's more subtle. So let's move this keyframe to the five second mark. 
With the mask selected, I'm going to press Command or Control D to duplicate the mask. I'm going to hit the U key to bring up all the keyframes. And I'm going to switch the position of these two keyframes. So I'm going to have this keyframe at the beginning of the composition and this keyframe at the end right here. I'm going to select both these keyframes, move my playhead to the one second mark. I'm going to offset the timing of these two masks. Now if I move my playhead, I should have two masks passing by one of another, magnifying our snowboarder. Next, let's trim the duration of our adjustment layer. I'm going to hit Option and right bracket key to trim the duration. I'm going to select the adjustment layer, press Command or Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. I'm going to move this a few seconds forward so we can have the magnifying effect occur twice in our animation. Now that we've created our animation for our image, as well as the magnifying effect, let's finish this off by adding some light overlays. For this example, I'm going to be using light overlays 027 and 080, but you can use any light overlays you choose for your animation. For light overlay 027, I'm going to set the scale to 48. Next, I'll change the blend mode to screen. Right now we can't see it because we have another light overlay on top of it, but once we change the scale and blend mode, then we should see the light overlays with our composition. So I'm going to select light overlay 080, and change its scale to 50. I'm going to change its blend mode from normal to soft light. Before I render this, I'm going to select my two position keyframes for my snowboarder. I'm going to drag it so I don't see the very first keyframe at the beginning of the composition, so that he's already in motion once the animation starts. I'm going to push the distance of this keyframe a little more, just so it's more slow and subtle. I'm going to render this real quickly, and I'll be back with you in just a second. Now, if you've taken the steps I've taken or have gone a different path, you should have something that looks like this. As you can see from these examples, Studio Light Overlays has a lot to offer. These are among my favorite Rampant products to use, thanks in part to their subtle ability to blend into anything you use them on. You can learn more about this product and other products by visiting the Rampant Design Tools website here. You can also keep up with Rampant Design Tools by following them on Twitter at Rampant Design. Feel free to like their Facebook page as well. I'm the NLE Ninja with NLE Ninja Effects asking you to stay creative 
and run rampant. Thanks for watching.